Hello everyone, I'm Zi Zhong Wang from Tsinghua University. Today I will present our group's work, an adapted racial coded storage game with an efficient code switching algorithm. We are now living in an era of big data. IDC predicts that the annual size of the global data sphere will reach 175 gigabytes in 2025. That will be a really huge amount. To handle such big data, we can use distributed storage systems. However, a main problem is to guarantee reliability and availability. A common way is n-way replication. The famous GFS uses three-way replication, so it can tolerate any two faults. However, n-way replication causes n times of storage cost, which is too expensive especially when data amount grows fast. So n-way replication is expensive, it's quite simple to implement and it's good for read operations. So it is still the default setting in HDFS and Ceph. To reduce the storage cost, racial coding can save much storage space at the same full tolerating level compared to MV replication. Here we will show you how racial coding works. In this example, the original data is divided into two parts, A and B. In three-way replication, all three nodes store both A and B, while in a 2-2 code, each node only stores one part, which data amount is half of the original data. When no one and no three fail, in three-way replication, no two still keeps the original data. Well, in two two code, we can still get B and A plus two B in no two and four. Then we can compute A and A plus B. So data are still safe. They both can tolerate any two faults, but three-way replication costs three times of storage space while the 2-2 code costs only two times. To use erasure coding, we were concerned about storage cost, full tolerance ability, recovery cost, write performance, update performance, and so on. Our work mainly focuses on storage cost, full tolerance ability, and recovery cost. As for write performance, is correlated with storage cost. Here, please allow me to hard sell an advertisement. We presented an erasure coding based consensus protocol, CRAF, in FAST20. It can help write performance in a synchronous situation. As for update performance, most methods can be used in our scheme. For simplicity, we can treat the system append only. Recovery cost is one of the major concerns. We use this example again. When we want to read data A and no one fails, in three-way replication, we can read A from node 2 or node 3. While we need to read data from at least two nodes in 2-2 two -two code. And we can conclude that in a KM code, recovery cost will reach K times. Prior work shows that more than 90% data errors are temporary errors due to network partitions, hotspot effects, rolling updates. In such situation, no data are permanently lost. To read such temporarily unavailable data, we should read from other nodes and then decode them. This operation is called degraded read. Therefore, we try to reduce degraded read cost. There is a trade off in these three aspects degraded read cost, storage cost, and fault tolerance ability. Using codes in different code families 
will achieve different results. For example, MDS codes can achieve low storage costs compared to non-MDS codes. Codes with good low quality can achieve low degraded read costs. While using codes in the same code family with different parameters, we can have we cannot have low degraded read costs, low storage costs, and high fold tolerance ability at the same time. However, shows that data access frequency is deep distribution. That means 80% data accesses will be applied in 10% data volume. We call frequently accessed data as hot data and infrequently accessed data as cold data. So hot data dominate most degraded reads, while cold data dominate most storage space. So we can deal with these two kinds of data with different codes. First, which guarantee a high enough fault tolerance ability. For hot data, degraded read cost is most important. As for cold data, storage cost should be most considered. So we have a simple but efficient idea. Data with different properties should be stored by different codes. To store hot data, the code should achieve low degraded read cost and high enough fault tolerance ability. We call this kind of code fast code. To store cold data, the code should achieve low storage cost and high enough fault tolerance ability. We call this kind of code compact code. According to temporal locality, hot data will become cold and cold data will become hot in some cases. So there is a new problem. Code switching from one code to another is a necessary procedure. In this example, to compute new parity chunks F3A and F4A, the whole original data A should be collected first. And this procedure is bandwidth consuming because it's like to write this data again. The previous adaptive scheme, HACFS, uses two codes in the same code family with different parameters. HACFS alleviates the code switching problem by using the similarity in one code family. However, since HACFS only uses codes from one code family, it cannot take advantage of the trade-off in different code families. Also, it cannot get rid of the code family's inherent defects. For example, it's impossible to set an MDS compact code. In our scheme, we will present an efficient code solution algorithm to match the scheme. We choose LRC as fast code and hitchhiker code as compact code. Specifically, we use K M minus one M LRC and K M hitchhiker code. There are some reasons why we choose them. First, LRC, which is with good locality, has low degraded read cost. Second, Hitchhiker is an MDS code, which is the best for storage cost. Third, these codes are commonly used codes. They have been implemented in HDFS or SAP. Finally, they are very similar. They both are based on RS codes. Also, data chunks will be grouped when encoding in both codes. LRC is the fast code in our scheme. Here is an example of 623 LRC. Hitchhiker code is the compact code in our scheme. 
Here is an example of six three hitchhiker code. So we can take advantage of this similarity and then present our code switching algorithm. This animation shows how we can switch RRC to hitchhiker code. And this animation shows how we switch hitchhiker code to LRC. If hitchhiker code uses XOR sum of data chunks as the first parity chunk, LRC can save a global parity chunk. Then the new scheme we use k m minus one m minus one LRC and k m hitchhiker code. However, code switching will become a little bit more complex. So here is our code switching algorithm in scheme two. This animation shows how we switch LRC to hitchhiker code. And this animation shows how we switch hitchhiker code to LRC. We compared our scheme with other codes at a 1.4 times storage overhead and a full tolerance ability similar with four-way replication. We can conclude that while at the same storage cost and slightly better full tolerance ability, our scheme is much better than other codes in degraded cost. We would like to compare our scheme with HACFS. However, since HACFS cannot have an MDS compact code, HACFS cannot reach the same storage overhead and the similar full tolerance ability with reasonable parameters. We define two ratios in our paper to reflect code switching efficiency. Ratio 1 is the amount of data transferred during code switching to the amount of data transferred during encoding. Ratio 2 is the total amount of data transferred during encoding to hot data form and switching into cold data form. 2, the amount of data transfer when directly encoding into code data form. As the table shows, our code switching algorithm is the most efficient one among them. So HACFS uses codes in the same code family. There are less extra costs in our scheme's code switching procedure. In our experiments, we set k to 12 and m to 4. So we use 1234 LRC and 124 hitchhiker code in scan 1. And we use 1233 LRC and 124 hitchhiker code in scan 2. Also, the storage overhead was set to 1.4 times. We implement the scams upon set. The workloads are generated randomly. The data access frequency was set to be zip distributed. 
As this figure shows, our scan performed excellently in degraded rate latency. Also, as we predict, scan 2 was slightly better than scan 1. Using our code switching algorithm, the switching time can be greatly reduced. In the future, we will try to complete our evaluations. For example, to use actual traces to implement in Ceph, not upon. Also, we will try to design new schemes with more parameter choices or more co-family choices. I will conclude here and I'm happy to take any questions and try my best to answer in Slack or Zoom when the conference is on. You are also more than welcome to email us. Thank you.